Hello everybody, it is I once again back with another Space Flight Simulator video and in today's SFS video I will um, launch a mission to Saturn. Not just Saturn, but Enceladus as you could see in the thumbnail and by reading the title. Because the update, uh, SFS 1.6, I'm very excited for it. Uh, Steph, please hurry up. This, this, this feels like an eternity. Um, the update is right around the corner and uh, I wanted to make a video like, you know, showing off a bit more of my planet pack because when the update uh, finally comes around, I'll probably make the switch and I won't be using these planet packs ever again. So, um, yeah, and I posted a poll like a week or two ago saying, hey guys, the update is almost here. Um, where do you want me to go? Uh, the options were Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. and a lot of you chose Saturn. Uh, the image of the pole is probably there on screen somewhere. Oh, there it is. Hello. So, um, yeah, that's that. And also, I don't think I ever showed Saturn in full detail in uh, one of my videos. I went to Titan once, but that was, you know, how far away Titan is from Saturn. So you don't really see much of uh, the planet. You only see it from afar. And plus, in that video, I completely forgot to zoom out until all the way at, like, at the end so um yeah that was th that video basically just showed a quick glimpse right there i selected that asteroid because um i heard somewhere that the captured asteroid wasn't gonna be in the next update like steph removed it so i was like what if i make a uh landing attempt on a small little asteroid i have in my planet pack that i called the hermes for uh just because it's a cool name and um yeah i just decided nah because you know, it. I don't want to drag the video on for too long, and the uh, main focus of the video is Saturn. So, when people click on this, they're gonna be like, "Hey, why are you clickbaiting us? You said you were, you were going to Saturn, and you're going to an asteroid, you clickbait YouTuber." <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, that's why I uh, didn't go there. And plus, I was already in a Saturn transfer window, so yeah. Oh, right there, I tried the Oberth effect because I. I don't know, I just felt like it. I, In my mind, I was like, oh, does this have enough fuel to reach Saturn and then come back? That's why I did the Oberth effect, because, you know, just to be a little more efficient, being efficient, you know, doesn't really, doesn't hurt anybody. So, um, yeah. So we're about to uh, complete our interplanetary burn. I should probably talk about the spacecraft. Uh, as you might have noticed uh, on launch, only the side boosters were uh, ignited. That is because this spacecraft was inspired by... Um, if you guys have seen the movie Ad Astra, like whenever the main character goes to the moon, um, he uh, boards a rocket like that and the rocket launches and drops the boosters, but like the whole rocket doesn't stage. The only thing that stages are the boosters. I'll probably put a clip of it on screen somewhere um, because, you know, not the full clip because YouTube will copyright this video, but, um, you know, just, I don't know, add like things over the clip so youtube doesn't you know detect it i guess i chose that orbit you might be wondering why am i entering such a high orbiter on saturn if enceladus is nowhere near that orbit um because originally i wasn't going to enceladus i was planning on going to rhea because i don't know rhea is like an underappreciated moon of saturn not a lot of people know about rhea well only the space flight nerds do but um yeah then i just decided uh you know what rhea is just a you know boring it's a gray and boring moon nobody probably wants to watch a uh, mission to rhea so um yeah i just switched to titan last minute <laughs> not titan and solid is yeah the, those are my planning uh those are my plannings for the videos i don't plan ahead on the videos i just says i just send the mission some what was that <laughs> i just send the mission somewhere and i'm like okay, where would be an interesting place to land? And uh, I just chose Enceladus because I, I already talked about it. It's, um, actually, did I? I, I? I completely forgot because this is my, um, I think this is like my fifth time trying to record this commentary because I keep messing up uh, sometimes. So, um, yeah, did I mention why I was going to Enceladus? Well, uh, I'm going to Enceladus because Enceladus is a pretty underrated moon. If I already mentioned this, I'm sorry. I don't want to go back uh, and uh, restart this commentary again. Um, so yeah, we're approaching the moon now. Um, 
as uh as you can see it's like in the middle of a uh hazy ring because in reality enceladus is responsible oh look at that that looks really cool in real life enceladus is responsible for um creating saturn's uh i think it's i think it's the f ring i don't remember i might put an image on screen uh of the ring enceladus creates around saturn um yeah the the image is right there you can see i i, I can't remember off the top of my head right now so yeah all right we're uh entering orbit around enceladus um this ship had way too much delta v we still um ended up with plenty of fuel by the time we arrived on earth and um as you'll see later i completely took advantage of that uh but please do not uh skip forward through the video because the landing is pretty interesting it gets really intense guys <laughs> okay no it doesn't but um still please watch the video it's really cool um so uh yeah zooming out again as you can see it's in the middle of a uh ring and enceladus has like a little uh haze around it since uh the actual moon um deploy not deploys i saw the landing like accidentally deploy and now that that just that was the first word to come out of my mouth um no the moon has uh ice uh ice water geysers that it uh shoots up into um from the southern hemisphere i think and cassini flew through them and that was really cool oh yeah uh thank you lego tales uh please go subscribe to the channel if you haven't uh this is your first time watching one of my videos um please subscribe uh you won't want to let lego tales down would you look at him oh wait uh i can't say look at him because he's not on screen anymore oh wait no i can pull him back up yeah look at him he's just so cute why would you want to say no to this face anyway back to the landing um the landing was pretty slow because I forgot to change the time warp height limit on Enceladus. So like whenever I made Enceladus, I just took Europa, uh, duplicated it and renamed it, changed a few of the uh, features and the texture. And that's pretty much it. I forgot to change the time warp height limit. So the um, height limit it has right now is the height limit of Europa. So um yeah, that's why it, it, it took like, uh, I think like three minutes to get down to the surface and I didn't want to add that to the video. So I just sped it up. I think I sped it up by like times three or something. Anyway, we have successfully landed on the surface of Europa. We had a, did I say Europa? I meant Enceladus. We did a little bounce, but um, hey, that's low gravity for you. Uh, we were, it was fine. Um, I did another little hop to see if I did get the uh, landed on Enceladus text because it looked like I didn't whenever I uh, landed, but um, I'm assuming I turned off the RCS thrusters at the same time. So the text was going to appear, but I turned off RCS and it interrupted it. So um, yeah, I guess that's that's that. Um, right there, I'm editing, not editing, um, fine tuning my orbit because I like docking with perfectly uh, I like docking with objects that are in perfectly circular orbits. I don't have to worry much about eccentricity and stuff like that, matching the uh, the numbers. If uh, if you know me, I like docking the old-fashioned way. I, I have only used the uh, rendezvous um, system or, like, navigation tool for rendezvousing. Like, I think I've only used it, like, twice or three times. I still dock the, um, the old-fashioned way by like if your object is you know uh behind you you enter a higher orbit than it so it catches up with you and vice versa if the object is ahead of you you enter a lower orbit to catch up with it um so now we're launching from the uh surface of enceladus there wasn't much there it was just uh gray and icy um i uh i'm assuming in real life it would be a lot more interesting <laughs> but um yeah we've now uh left the moon and i didn't want to wait again for the time warp um limit thing so i just switched to the ship and uh time warp with that so um yeah uh right there i'm uh i'm gonna be fine-tuning my orbit a little bit to um you know rendezvous with the ship because yeah or else how are we gonna get home um yeah i was pretty impressed because i i i pretty much timed it perfectly um well not perfectly we still had to do pretty much one orbit but 
hey, that's how how much would a low orbit around Enceladus um, realistically take? Like how many minutes? Uh, can anybody research that? I'm curious now. Um, so yeah, we're coming up to the ship. Uh, looks uh, pretty cool. It has solar panels. Um, I just realized I haven't really talked much about the ship. The only thing I said is that it looked like the Ad Astra thing earlier. Um, but um, like the uh, the little silver ring thing that you see there, um, it's supposed to uh, be the um, it's supposed to divide the fuel section from the living section. So um, yeah, uh, to give you a sense of where the crew would be. Um, yeah, and now I'm setting my course to Earth, but for some reason the orbital lines didn't um, show up. So uh, not to worry though. I uh, easily fix that by just leaving uh, Enceladus orbit. Uh, it it didn't really take much. It took like a second of <laughs> of um, full throttle burning to do that. <laughs> you um, you could see there it didn't take long at all. Um, so now that we're in Saturn orbit, hopefully we could um, we can reach Earth safely. Um, I'm saying that like if it's a mystery. I mean like if I wasn't um, if I didn't reach Earth safely, you wouldn't be watching this video, right? And hey, uh, we were already in an Earth transfer window because um, Saturn, it um, it moves so slowly that... Uh, but I I'm kind of puzzled because does that mean Earth didn't move either? I mean, it clearly moved because it's not in the same position it was before. So um, I guess it was just like a nice coincidence that it ended up in the same... Um, in, in a transfer window again. Uh, am I making any sense right now? Uh, I hope I am. So now we're performing our Saturn, um, I was going to say Saturn injection. No, that would have been whenever uh, we were entering orbit. This is our trans-Earth injection. Yes, our trans-Earth injection, which will take us out of the Saturn system and place us on a trajectory to um, intersect and land on the Earth. I kind of overshot the burn a little bit, but um, just pretend you didn't see that. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, bye-bye, Saturn. I think I just saw Titan there, the little golden ball. Um, so, yeah, uh, goodbye, Saturn. See you um, whenever I feel like it again. Uh, I don't know if I'll use this planet pack again after the update, uh, after the 1.6 update, because, come on, 1.6 has water, and that's cool. And I'm, I'm low-key tired of the Earth just being a, a PNG to you know have details so um yeah we're now speeding into the inner solar system you might be wondering why are you um why are you uh <laughs> i lost my train of thought hold on why are you uh coming into the earth like this and um are you going to re-enter like this no uh i'm going to enter orbit because i have way too much fuel i think i mentioned before that the spacecraft had way more delta v than it needed um, I did not design it like that. It just happened to, <laughs> it just happened to, um, uh, be like that, I guess. Uh, so there's a moon flyby. There's absolutely nothing on the moon because I, this is a brand new, uh, sandbox. Actually, this was my Prower Aerospace sandbox. Um, for those wondering what is up with the Prower Aerospace technology, uh, series, it's not technology anymore. Yeah, it is technology. Yeah, it's technology. It used to be industries. Now it's technology. Um, I don't know. It just, uh, I feel like it's boring. Not a lot of people watched it, so I kind of stopped it. Uh, um, I set myself on an earth collision course by accident. Um, but yeah, I, um, I quickly corrected it. And uh, yeah, we're now on our way to the earth. As you can see, though, there is a problem, a very big problem. If you play this game a lot, you might have already noticed what the problem was. But for those who don't know, I entered orbit facing the left. Does that make sense? <laughs> for the ones who don't play this game, this probably doesn't make sense. But in the SFS community, it's always like been, uh, I don't know how I should say this, like a sin to orbit left, even though realistically uh, that would be like left would be east and if, if we're watching the uh the solar system from a top view it would make sense to launch left but uh does anybody understand what i'm trying to say right now but anyway that none of this matters because 
I still had way too much fuel, so I just decided to correct myself. Uh, a little, um, you know, I just want to say this out there. I just want to put this out there. Do not do burns like that unless you have an extreme amount of fuel like I did or a very efficient spacecraft. Do not do burns like that. It looked um, pretty easy, but it, it takes a very colossal amount of fuel to do something like that. So now we're detaching and um, performing our deorbit burn with the center engine that I completely forgot to show until now. Um, <laughs> that engine is intended for a planetary takeoff like in case like let's just say i land on mars and i don't have enough fuel to not fuel i don't have enough thrust to um launch from mars because the ions are too weak i use that center engine for a bit to boost up into the upper atmosphere and then the ions take over from there um i should make a little short on this lander showing that because i'm kind of upset that i didn't show it in this video at all well um, you know until now uh right there this re-entry was pretty pretty scary because i forgot to uh refuel the capsule or at least put a bit more fuel inside the capsule before re-entering so i couldn't just activate rcs immediately i had to uh use the probes torque inside the capsule um to uh perform the um how, how do you how do you say it i don't know the term the um the the maneuvering so i didn't flip and explode and die uh so yeah um that's it and i think we ran out of fuel just in time as soon as the um the uh plasma is dissipating so three two one there we go uh look at that <laughs> that was terrifying whenever it happened but thankfully my capsule did not burn up and it was okay and look at our landing site it I, I won't lie, it kind of resembles Europa in this game because Europa has like that orange and white-ish color. Um, so yeah, it's kind of kind of nice in a way. We launched from Enceladus and somehow ended up on Europa. Uh, but with that uh, landing on quote-unquote Europa, I will end the video uh, here. So if you like what you saw here today, make sure to you know drop me a little like down below. It really helps. And leave a comment too, because I like reading people's comments, like what their opinion is about this mission or just, you know, a suggestion for the future, like a future mission, because I think that's pretty cool. Um, anything else? Oh, yeah, my uh, socials are in the uh, description down below, Instagram, Discord, Twitter, um, all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, bye. Bye.